Going to need a cornerback for the future. I've already talked about this before. This guy, I'm not a big fan of his uh, per se. And all the people who said that I was hating on him, he didn't get drafted in the first round. I'm pretty sure my analysis was spot on about this guy. But I also said that he's worth taking a flyer on because of his athleticism. And the Eagles would be that. Having a guy like James Bradbury, one of these technician types he could learn behind. Having a guy like Darius Slay, who was a bit of a technician, who was a bit of a, 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 of a athletic guy himself uh, to learn behind. That would be Keely Ringo. Big Keely Ringo right there. Uh, he could be physical as well. I believe he would fit the scheme of what Sean designed these guys like. They took Tariq Woolen in Seattle last year, who was a super physical freak out there. Right? He was the biggest freak in all of football at the cornerback position. Keely Ringo could possibly be his equal as we're talking about straight line speed and size and all that. Keely Ringo could do that. With the 105th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Philadelphia Eagles select Keely Ringo, defensive back, Georgia. There you go. The Keeley's had to wait for a little while, but it might be worth the wait. And there'll certainly be plenty of guys yeah. that he knows on that defense now. It's unbelievable. And that, you know what, Drew Gallagher, I'll give him credit. One of our executive producers said, said if they go Georgia again this year, you better have the Southeast uh, area scout who, who did all of this work. And, and it's Phil Baia from the Southeast area scout for Philadelphia. And Alan Walking's the cross checker. Mm -hmm. These guys have been sleeping, having meals there in Georgia. I mean, they, they basically pitched a camp a tent and they have now put three really talented players from the Georgia defense in, ad in addition to the two guys a year ago. That's five players that could be starters in the very near future and Kaylee Ringo has got all the talent in the world now. Yeah, Lou, a guy that has all the physical and athletic skills. What I want to ask you, Lou, talk about what's missing. Lou, that's this late routes. He's glare. It's like glued the receiver and he still makes the catch. What do you think of Ringo, Lou? Yeah, that, that's just it. Look, that, that's called the last third of the down. He can get a lot of work done at the line of scrimmage when he is is dialed in and his technique is straight as far as his hands, his off-hand jams. He just needs to make sure he finishes on the football down the field like you see him right here. Look, those kind of plays right there where you have the, you're in phase with the wide receiver and you pin him to the boundary, that's exactly what you have to really start to develop in terms of consistency. And he has some guys now in Philadelphia that he'll be able to learn from. James Bradbury, one of the better technicians. Darius Slay, one of the better all-around corners in the NFL. He'll be able to learn from some good people just like his teammates who were drafted here are going to be able to learn from some great veterans on this roster as well. Yeah, guys, and I wonder, I know he started a lot of games at Georgia, 27 game starter at corner. I think he could actually play safety and be a very good safety as well. You see the body type, 4'3", 6 speed at 6'2", 210 pounds. He has some struggles in man coverage. That's why he's available today. We saw that in the Ohio State game when Marvin Harrison was giving him work, but as a safety, when he could come up and play the ball, I think that might actually be his best spot. But the Eagles need youth, like Lou said, in the secondary. they got to get some young guys back there. Great moment for the Ringo family. His mom, Traley, has won a battle against breast cancer. Keeley himself was a sprint champion in high school. A lot of athletic ability to ride with with the Eagles. I like to call them the Philly Dogs. Yeah. Instead of look at here. Look at here. Now, listen. If you're not subscribed to this channel and you're a Philadelphia Eagles fan, what the hell are you throwing? Come on, man. Your boy single-handedly wheeled in Jalen Carter for them Eagles, right? I mean, I'm talking about this shit since last year, about him being the number one player in his draft, going on for months and months, how he should be the Eagles selection. And that was a pipe dream, right? Who in the hell would have thought that he would be there at the ninth pick, say, in December or January? Your boy right here. It's mental telepathy, baby. <laughs> I will that bad boy in. And then beyond that, of course, as you guys know, the primary cover at this channel, a primary cover, is the University of Georgia, a team that I have covered for the last seven years in various mediums, right? I, took my, I covered them at SB Nation, uh, at Rivals, uh, Yahoo Sports Radio, um, I did stuff on them for a podcast, like a, a podcast that I had that was very popular. I know that team like the back of my hand. Howie Roseman, the great Howie Roseman, Coach Sirianni, and these scouts, these area scouts uh, on the pro side and these area scouts on the college side are absolutely doing work out this joint, straight up, right? <laughs> but they're doing 
work off shit that I have already done the past however many years. If we're talking about, as you've seen before, I said that the Eagles should go after one Keely Ringo, right? And now he's a Philadelphia Eagle. That's hard, right? It's hard because of the value. Now, if you've been watching this channel, this has been a controversial topic at this channel. No doubt about that. Why? Because I don't slurp. I don't slurp football, right? I'm not one of these guys who goes by hype. Killy Wingo is a very popular player for the University of Georgia. Uh, he had that pick six to seal that first national championship that they had a couple of years ago. But listen, I do film studies on them on a week in and week out basis. There's not a snap from any player that you can draft from the University of Georgia that I haven't seen or I haven't studied or anything like that. I understand his skill set. Now you can hear guys like um, Mel Kuyper and Lewis Riddick and Todd McShay and Matt Miller, all of these guys saying shit that I've been saying for the past couple of years about the guy. Not to mention he goes in the fourth round, the 105th pick, when people were calling me a hater saying that uh, he's a top 10 pick. What am I talking about? Oh, you you don't know anything and all this and that. When they, But previously, before then, they say I'm the king and all this and that. But as soon as I say something about someone who's popular and they don't jive with that particular analysis, and then they flip on your boy, right? But it's all good. I'm not here to be popular. I'm here to give proper analysis. So if you're not subscribed to this channel and you're a Philadelphia Eagle fan, make sure you hit that subscription button, baby. We're going to go ahead and take over, right? This is my team, right? This is my city, right? This is, this is my shit. You come to South Jersey, baby, you got to pay the toll, baby, as far as analysis goes because we're going to have the best shit going here, especially when you put all those guys on a team with Fletcher Cox. With Brandon Graham, right? Think about the leadership there. I said it. They said it in the thing right there. I had said it previously. This guy can learn behind a Darius Slay or this guy can learn behind a James Bradbury. These guys are technician types. These guys are very and Slay's a Slay's very charismatic. And I also said this, which right people got mad at. He's probably better off playing the safety position. Uh, he's a pretty good striker. Right, very good physicality, six foot two or whatever, six one and some change, uh, two hundred and ten pounds per se. Right, probably even larger. I, I remember him getting a little bit bigger than that in college at one particular point in time. The guy could be a very good, strong safety. He's pretty much Terrell Edmonds, but faster. Right, Terrell Edmonds is a good athlete as well from the Hokies, baby. So you got to make sure. Uh, that you know the entire scope there. But if if you can see that he can be a Terrell Edmonds and you get a Terrell Edmonds on a one-year rental, um, of course, uh, he can play a myriad of positions. But I would have to think that um, they're probably looking at him in the future for the cornerback position. And he can learn from those guys. And what did I say as well in that first thing? Covering the Seattle Seahawks with Sean Desai, the new defensive coordinator who came over from Seattle. He fits that scheme like a Tariq Woolen, vertical bell type, type approach to where Keely Ringo can get eyes on the ball. He's not good in man coverage. I have an hour long film study I did. I broke this man down where you couldn't believe because people were saying that I was a hater. I was a hater. And I'm just like, man, I'm just covering the sport like I always do. Why would I hate on anyone? It's football. It's not personal. See, that's why I'm in this position and these people are hate watching me because I understand business. It's just business. I, I, I'm I, not covering anyone's personal life. I don't talk about my own personal life. So why the hell would I care about anyone else's personal life? It's just analysis. My man's hips are stiffer than a diving board. At the moment of truth scenario, I'm not sure he panics. He has bad vision or something like that. But he very rarely can procure a, a, an interception if he's there or a pass breakup or anything there. I had to not show the little highlights and stuff like that because they'll they'll doctor they probably still will. I probably have to erase that section with him getting drafted. But if not, just know that every single play that they showed was a vertical route. He does best on vertical routes. And even then he's a little 50 50 with that. If someone has a good change of direction, uh say he had to go against Devontae Smith in practice or some of these guys like that, or just the guys you know. Justin Jefferson and all these guys who are great with change of direction. He can't compete. He can't. I'm sorry. He may do good two out of ten times, but that's not good enough in the National Football League. And I used two out of ten times. I was thinking about in college. Think about going against uh, 
You know what I'm saying? Think about going against some of these guys where you're just like, oh, Jamar chasing these guys like that. That shit is scary. These guys can do a whole bunch of different stuff, and they're great at the moment of impact. But in the fourth round, a guy who's six foot two, 210 pounds, who runs a 4-3, you take that chance all day long. I would have been good with him in the second round. The Philadelphia Eagles are absolutely destroying this damn draft, man. <laughs> right? We're already one of the top – the top two, the best team in the NFC, in my opinion. Uh, much love to the San Francisco 49ers. Um, much love to. Man, you gotta. <laughs> I won't give much love to that. But listen, these guys out there in the AFC, right? The Bills, the Bengals, the Chiefs, all these guys like that, those are very good teams. We're easily as good as those teams. And we're putting together a squad that is chock full of versatility but starts from the inside out a lot of these other teams right they're faking the funk they're worried about nothing but edge players right a 25 man rotation of edge players and this and that you have to have a complete team and howie roseman understands that and as you can see right on the draft still going they went up and got Achilles ringo that's absolutely perfect for a team that needs death. You get a guy who's, who all of these people who are Ringo sexuals with his nuts in their mouth thought was a top 10 pick. He was a five-star cornerback coming out. So he at least has that type of pedigree there. I uh, played on back-to-back -back national championship teams. He's never been a starter, and they didn't win the national championship. So imagine the type of ball that he's played, the type of high-level ball that he's involved in. They talked about Marvin Harrison Jr., right, Philly's own, giving him the business out there. Uh, he's been in those type of things. So at the very least, he carries that with him. But he goes to a team with a whole bunch of great veterans that he can learn from on both sides of the ball. I think it's absolutely perfect, man. So. And then continuing on with that, if they want to continue to draft Georgia players, man, hey, listen, the Georgia fans, we've had our love-hate relationship, right? Mostly hate on my end, right? Because you guys be pissing me off all the time. But listen, I've never said that Georgia's players, which people can see me, I cover stuff neutrally. Georgia gets some of the very best players in the nation. There's no doubt about that. There's a reason why they're successful. So you're tying into that, you know what I mean, amongst other teams, right? There's a whole bunch of Alabama players on the team. Oklahoma players on the teams you're getting these guys from these big programs who have been in big moments it can only bode well in the future right that doesn't mean that guys from other conferences and other schools obviously I'm a Penn State fan I would love to have Jair Brown had been on this team he got drafted or a Juice Scruggs we needed an interior offensive lineman right or even maybe a Brenton Strange right beyond tight end one and um Driscoll and these guys like that so it's still more to be out there but if they want to uh, Chris Smith, I'm still, if he hasn't been drafted already, I still think they need a free safety. Uh, I don't know how many picks are left, so I might need to shut my mouth right there, right? It feels like Howie Roseman, he doesn't give a damn about salary caps. He gives, doesn't give a damn about draft picks. He's going to make it happen, right? That's why we're most one of the most consistent franchises, period, right? I've been a fan of this team since, I think, 1990, right? My mom's favorite player was Randall Cunningham. Obviously, I love my mom. And uh, I will watch all the Randall Cunningham. I love everything about that dude. And then my favorite player ended up being Donovan McNabb, right? Huge Donovan McNabb fan. I watched him in Syracuse. I was always a, fans of, a fan of people who played multiple sports like I did. And I remember him from the basketball scene. And then they said he played football. I followed him throughout his end of his high school career through Syracuse. And then he goes to my Eagles. This shit is lining up perfectly, man. Eagles are going to be good for the next however many years. They're stacking for the future. Guys like Keely Ringo, he doesn't have to matter now. Nolan Smith, he does not have to matter now. They drafted Sidney Brown from Illinois. He does not have to matter right now, but he could definitely be worked in there um, in the safety position. But even then, you have Justin Edmund, Edmonds, Terrell, I mean, Terrell Edmonds, Justin Evans, and these guys. It's just a conglomerate of great shit, man. So keep it locked right here. It's your boy, Mid-Atlantic Murph, a.k.a. Jersey Murph, coming out. Listen, if you in South Jersey, man, I wouldn't do this for no other team. But, man, shit, I might have to get a collective going, man. We can one day meet up or whatever like that. You know what I'm saying? It could be in the Jersey Shore, whatever. You know what I mean? We can be out here. Stand up, baby. Vineland, Millville, uh, Bridgeton, Atlantic City. People in the Philadelphia area, you know what I'm saying? Stand up, Christiana, Delaware, uh, Newark, anywhere, baby, Wilmington. 
It's all good. All right. Your boy made that language more viral back to the draft, though. All right. Salute. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing.